Hey guys, iTune here. Just want to give you guys an update on what's coming in 4.1.0 of Tabula. As usual, you have this button here on the main menu, so I'm going to click it and you'll be brought to the usual Tabula interface. Well, there's going to be something new on the bottom here and it's an animations tab, which uh, when you can open and it will look like this. When you open it for the first time, you will get a pop-up or something like that, but because uh, I've been running this a couple of times now. The pop-up only appears the first time. I won't get that pop-up. But yeah, the animation UI looks something like this. It's got a timeline and everything. But uh, you can't really mix around with it until you brought in a model or you started up a project. So I'm just going to make a simple project. And I'm just going to make... Um, actually, I'm just going to import a model. Uh, let's go bring this guy in here. So one thing you can notice when you select a new model is that it's there's also there's uh, some additional controls which you can actually click on and drag to adjust. Um, these links you could say are actually to adjust the rotation around the rotation point so you can actually click and drag them just to change them. Um, because of certain limitations, well, coding limitations from myself, uh, I was only able to make it so that when you click and you drag towards the right or upwards, it will um, increase the value. If you drag it down or to the left, it's going to decrease the value. So right now I'm changing the y-axis or the rotation on the y-axis. So if I want to change it on the x-axis, I'm going to grab this one and drag that instead. So yeah, there's just some additional animation, animation, no, sorry, uh, just some additional controls in general, which you, uh, I hope makes it easier to, for you to animate or even just make models in general. And there's one thing I showed just now is when you hold the shift key down, you have these, these kind of arrows instead, which, uh, you, you notice, uh, are on the boundaries of all the boxes. So you can actually click and drag them to increase the size of the box or, to the left to decrease the size so yeah that's it for the controls but as I was going on about animations you gotta select uh, you gotta have a, an, a model first uh, okay a, an open project then you can click on add animation and the simple DUI will pop up so I'm just gonna say make something simple such as um, hit dip so what you're going to do now is you're going to select on this animation here. Then you have to select a piece of a, a cube, anything from the model tree that's not a group. Because so uh, once you want to add an animation component, it's going to tell you you have to click on the cube first. So I'm going to click on the head here and select the head. Then I'm going to hit um, add component, animation component. So I want to say I want to make the head dip downwards. So I'm just going to name this dip. And you'll notice that it has a component length and it has a component start tick. So basically what I'm doing for animations is it works off some kind of double keyframe kind of method. So the start keyframe and the end keyframe, which you can see here, I'm actually going to bring this out a bit. So you can see this is the start keyframe. This, the start keyframe defines where the head's going to be when the animation starts playing, while the end keyframe will tell you how much the cube moves during the animation. Animations are, are all relative to the position, so if you change the, the start keyframe, but then you change the overall model, it's actually going to, the animations you're going to play out exactly the same because it's relative to position. It doesn't lock the, the cubes to any certain positions or something like that. So you just want to take note of that. Make sure that your model is final before you start on animations, because if you start changing the model around, the animations are going to get messed up as well. So simple example here, I'm going to go to the end point here, and I'm say going to... Oh, one thing I want to add, while you're selected on an animation, you and you've got the cube selected, you cannot edit anything, uh, any of the cubes in the model. So say I'm right in the middle of the two keyframes, and I like to change, say, the position. It's not going to change. If you're going to look at it, it tries to change, but you're not going to be able to change it, actually. So you got to go to the end point of the cube that you've selected. Say if you go to something else, that's not going to change either. So you got to go select the, uh, the cube of the um, animation component 
and you're gonna want to change it from the animation i'm i'm kind of droning on a bit but i hope you get the point so i'm gonna change say the position i want to make it dip down a bit so because i've changed the end keyframe you'll notice that the, the animation kind of plays like that so if say i try and play the animation that's going to happen uh, i can also make the animation loop So that happen. Mm -hmm. So say I want to make the animation loop seamlessly. I can always come over here and say add another animation component. And make sure you select the animation component. Then I'm gonna go back to the end point and I'm gonna reset the position. So I'm gonna try and play the animation now. And it's gonna loop over. And it, looks, um, it seems to loop seamlessly, that's one thing. So there's another thing about animation components which I want to add is that you'll be able to actually adjust the animation uh, component progression, which is something like this, because animations are normally, how do you say, linear. It's linear. So if you do something like this, all you got to do is click on the line, and then you just drag the point to somewhere, say, to form a curve or something like that. And you notice that the animation playing in the background is slightly different. It's uh, well, basically it's following this animation curve. So I can always do something like this and make the animation play this way. Because the animation time is short, you won't really notice it that much. But you can see it's dipping. It goes back up and then it goes back down again to complete the animation. But yeah, that's uh, bas one basic thing for the animation component progression which um, hopefully you guys will be able to understand and hopefully make to good use. So that's a basic outline of animations. And uh, I'm actually just going to open up a simple model, which I've already made an animation a while back, um, just to show you, how, show you guys how the animation can actually play out. So yeah, that's going to be it for animations. Um, there's also a new team selector that I've added to Tabula. It's just a really simple thing, but uh, you can, you guys can actually you just mess around and make your own team if you want. I'll personally, I would like to stay on the default, and it's up here right next to the redo button. Just click on that, and there we do actually have a couple of team submissions. Uh, you might want to be careful a bit with a couple of them. Just be careful with your eyes because they can be pretty bright. Some of them. <coughs> Seasoning bacon. <laughs> But yeah, some of them actually, um, they just give, give a general different look to Tabula, you could say. Because they even change the block that the, the model is standing on. So, like I said, I still prefer the original one. Ah, that's a bit bright. Yeah, so I prefer the original one, so I'm just going to stick on that for now. Alright, let's just say goodbye to this waving zombie right now. And let's go into multiplayer. So what I've done is I've actually set up a quick workspace. Hang on, let me just end this. Right, so um, what I'm doing right now is actually showing you guys how multiplayer works. Uh, you got to craft the wax tablet at first. Um, it's basically a ghastly on top of a pressure plate, and you're going to get a wax tablet like that. So you can place yeah. it down. And basically, this is where you're going to interact with in Tabula. Tabula is uh, basically, it uses you, the player, as kind of a mainframe. I won't go to technical details right now, but as you can see on the right side, there's someone hosting a Tabula session, and it's on this, it, uh, this current wax tablet. So if I'm going to right-click here, I'm actually going to join into a current um, session. So you'll see it on both screens. Because Kihira is, well, it's not actually Kihira, I'm just proofing her name here. But she is currently hosting this session, and I've just joined the session. Just move that out of the way, huh? Yep, so basically, we've got two different people working in one workspace. So I can actually open up a model over here, and it's going to show up as. Uh, let me just import this one. 
So it's going to send over to Kihira the, the model information and it's going to pop up over there as well. So if I want to edit a piece of a model here, I can actually just do that over here and she'll see it on her side as well. So say I don't want to edit on my model here, I can always go to a different project, open a main minecart and Kihira can stay on this model and edit this one. And I can work on the mini minecart, something like that, you know. And if I want to, I can always just go back to the project and see what Kihira is doing. And of course, just as you guys saw earlier, that is that is chat. Uh, this chat is actually kind of isolated from the Minecraft chat. So if someone talks in Minecraft over here, you don't you won't be able to see it inside because this this like I said is an isolated chat. You see it on both sides. Oh, one additional thing, because Kihira is hosting, she gets a couple of additional controls over here where she can add or remove editors. The defaults have anyone who joins the session allowed to edit models. So you can actually remove, say, I want to remove myself as, a, as an editor. Once I've gotten removed as an editor, I actually cannot edit any of the models anymore. I cannot do anything about it. I can't, it, it, well, the changes might show up, but you won't actually see it there. And once you hold tab, you actually see that I'm I'm not an editor, so I'm gonna go back and add myself as an editor. You're gonna see that I've been set as an editor again, and I can actually change the model if I want to. And as you can see on Kihira's screen, it's changing as well. Oh, you also notice that on the bottom here, we got a guy called Twitch there. He's actually there to mess around with uh, Twitch base, my other mod. If I edit the model here, it, it'll actually show up down here as well. So you don't have to be in the session to see what model is being edited. If I were to change to a different project, it will also show up here. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to say in for this video. I'm not really sure if I've left anything out, but hopefully you guys will be able to figure stuff out. Um. Yeah, that's going to be it for 4.1.0 for the Taboo update and uh, I hope you guys like it and I'll catch you guys next time.